If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Make sure you check out Poton Store. They have the new certain shield codes already available and they have automatic email delivery for these codes. You can get them in batches of 50 codes with a slight discount or individually for 89 cents each. They also have all these other promo codes. They have um, every other set you could imagine. And if you use Tailbone code, you get 5% off your final purchase. For the European players, Millibuds Gaming has everything from collectibles to all the latest cards from the latest sets, Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, and everything from Sun and Moon. Don't forget to check it out and use Tailbone code when checking out in order to get 5% off your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to Tier World 2020. Thank you so much for joining me and continuing to tune in to our expanded series videos. I want to take a look today at Andrew Mahomes from the Tricky Gym, if you haven't checked them out. They're a great content creator. Andrew Mahomes from the Tricky Gym ended up getting top 8 at Collinsville with Snorlax VMAX. 340 HP, a Behemoth Gigantamax Pokemon. Gmax Fall does 60 damage plus 30 more damage for each of your benched Pokemon. Now, this is pretty cool because you can cover the attack cost with the triple acceleration energy, which can only be attached to evolution Pokemon, so pretty nice way to get the attack off that way. The deck does run um, five stage one lines, so we have Sinchino with the make two ability, essentially Zorak, but can't be stopped by Power Plant where you discard a card and draw two. We also have Altaria. With the Delta Evolution, you can immediately evolve Swap Blue into Altaria. And the ability Clear Humming removes weakness from your Pokemon. I'm not sure what Pokemon in particular Andrew was actually scared of. I feel like this is definitely, in the current expanded format, this is definitely a card you could drop. And these are two very valuable spaces. But we also have Mock to use Power of Alchemy and shut off a lot of really good abilities like Satian's um, Intrepid Sword, but also, more importantly, Sudoro's Roadblock, which you do play yourself, but shutting off your opponents is important so that you can use Skyfield and fill up your bench and do a lot of damage that way. And finally, we have the Pastel Veal ability from Galarian Rapidash, where your Pokemon recover from all special conditions and they can't be affected by any special conditions. So, once again, a tech against Shock Lock decks, otherwise you would have trouble against them. And we have the Magnadel GX line as well, so I guess technically six stage one lines in this deck. For the Stinger GX, both players shovel their prize cards into their decks and then each player puts the top three cards of their deck face down as their prize cards. You use Stinger GX and then you just KO a tag team for game with G Max Full. Now the deck does play a bunch of options in terms of item cards, I love utility, quick pulls are fantastic along with Ultra Balls, so search for the Shamans, the Denes, and um, Lele, along with any Pokemon you might need to set up. We have Cold Risk because we're going to be using a very heavy bench most of the time. We have playing Wynon as well, which can search for um, for colorless Pokemon. So you can search for Shamans and Chino and the Snorlax line and even Altaria if you need to. No Battle Compressor is very surprising in this list. Um, double special charge, double special charge to recover those special energies which we can only play four of, and then AZ to fully heal your Snorlax Vmax. So let's jump into ladder, see what we can do with this deck in the expanded ladder, and figure out if it's worth pursuing or not. All right. All right. So we do win the coin flip. I believe we want to go first with this deck so that we can set up, get our Pokemon going, get our evolutions going. Um, this hand's decent, right? We're actually up against ADP Blounds, apparently. 
right? We're actually up against ADP Blount, so it should prove to be very, very interesting. And, well, maybe not. They throw out Professor's Letter and Max Elixir actually makes me question my existence. <laughs> now I actually have absolutely no clue what we are up against. Um, well, there's a big teeny right there. Wow, this is actually a pretty bad hand now. For you going first. So I think I'm actually just gonna do this. I don't wanna give any information to my opponent, even though like we have the the colorless deck box, so that's a lot of information right there. Like you can make assumptions based on that. Oh, but my opponent simply passes, okay. Alright, so we'll definitely take this opportunity to go ahead and search for these three people. And now we're talking, because now we can do this, and we can do this, and this, and this, and we can set up for one, I guess. Not the best, not the worst, and I guess we'll pass. And the next turn, we'll finally have a good setup going, possibly. See the energy attachment to the Vitini. We might just get, see the Ditto go down, but if that's the case, all right. So my opponent's hand is just completely dead, apparently. So let's promote this person for sure, and we get the triple. So that should mean game, right? 60, I need how many bench? Five bench Pokemon, I already have them, so should be good. I'll grab this swap blue just in case I'm missing something. Pretty sure I'm not, but let's do this. And then let's do this. And then let's do this. And that should be 210, right? If my maths actually works properly. And I mean, just for good measure, GMAX fall. And we take our first win very decisively against a big teeny V person. So. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that doesn't really count. We had a very slow start for the most part, and part of the reason why choosing to go first can be problematic at times. But oh well, right? Oh well. We'll work with it. We will work with it. Alright. Alright. So, I mean, let's choose to go first still, but I'm not 100% convinced that that's correct. I don't know. The new rules are always weird. Okay. So with this hand, I kind of like starting with Chino. I feel like Grimer might be more viable overall. Especially against an unknown opponent, right? Especially against an unknown opponent. Okay. So now this hand's looking pretty nice. Um, okay, so I'm liking the idea of doing this and establishing a Snorlax, if we can find one, there we go, and then going ahead and doing this, this, stretching back the Dedene into the deck so we have a chance to draw it or search for it with our Quick Wall, and then we set up for 5, giving us a pretty nice hand pretty nice hand i kind of like just keeping this hand for now well you know what i'll quick ball i'll quick ball for ditto uh yeah i'll quick ball for ditto we prized once in chino did prize once in chino and one triple not the end of the world uh yeah, I'll go for this one, you know. There's Mary for Sudowoodo as well. I'll just go for this, and then we'll pass. See what my opponent does next turn, and we'll go from there. A lowland Persian GX does not stop Snorlax VMAX, so it's essentially going to be a pretty useless Pokemon overall, right? For the most part. We do get end out of our pretty good hand, but we are getting 6 cards, so it's not terrible at all. Not terrible at all. 
All right. And this hand only has Minchino for acceleration. The chaotic spell is super annoying. However, however, if we find a Snorlax Emax, we have essentially won the match because our opponent once again has only found a single Pokemon. So let's do this and let's get rid of uh, the stretcher, I feel. Well, actually, I mean, Chino, because I do have stretcher to get both of them back if I need to. All right, so there's that person. I am going to lose the energy, though. I can't attach it to the Snorlax. Um, my other to Chino is prized, but I definitely don't think I'll be needing Rapidash, so might as well. Well, or do I want to keep the bench space open in case I whiff? Maybe that's better, actually. Maybe that's better. All right, triple. I do find a quick ball. To find a quick ball, which can net me Lele. And the Lele can search for Wynonna. And we have won yet another game where we get to essentially dunk our opponent. We get to essentially dunk our opponent right here. Snorlax VMAX. 210 damage on turn two. Pretty, pretty powerful. All right. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's two wins in a row for this deck where our opponent does literally nothing <laughs> other than attack on turn one. So not the waste of deals for this win. So let's see if we can get a real game here. At least you're seeing like the flow of the deck a little bit. It's not perfect, of course, but, um, but it's okay. Right? But it's actually okay. Alright. Alright. Can my opponent put up a better fight? We are going second this time with the Wynonna in hand, so that's pretty powerful. No complaints there. We'll probably end up quick walling the Kuzma. We see a whole start for my opponent, so some sort of um, Ninja Boy deck perhaps, some sort of Bird Trio deck perhaps, we'll have to see. Double Trainer's Mail being played right off the bat there's a ninja boy as i was mentioning so it's very easy to like if you have knowledge right of the meta to have like this sort of intuition on what your opponent will be playing depending on what they start right depending on what they do start all right so there we see a shaman more holes four hole he axes wow that is surprising to say the least. Uh, we see a Jolteon, not the use of Teals. Okay, Glacian EX will be an issue though. Because other than Snorlax VMAX, we literally cannot attack, right? Literally cannot attack. However, there are enough targets in our opponent's bench for us to take KO zone, so that's really nice. Tons of rebirths coming into play. Like, unless my opponent finds a way to shut off my supporters, I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident so far. We're gonna get big cold resist, we're gonna have access to Guzma, the VS Seeker. I'm going size to retreat, which I don't particularly agree with for the most part, but let's go for a point. No, no. Definitely grabbing another Snorlax and double Minchino, I'd say. And I do have Lele, the Dene. I have Dowsing Machine and four PS Seeker. So I definitely like getting rid of the Guzma. 
Worst case scenario for that would be a draft rate, which I'd be very, very surprised to see, honestly, very surprised to see. Let's go ahead and grab the ditto here, and then we'll go ahead and bench, 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 bench. And honestly, I think I pass. I could shame in for three, but what else am I actually looking for? I don't think there's anything I'm particularly looking for at this point, other than a Snorlax VMAX, of course. And my opponent decides to immediately attach another energy. Oh. Uh, yep, there we go. <laughs> Articuno Moltres Zapdos. Decides to knock out the active though, which makes me very happy. I thought he was going to GX KO my bench, which I think would have been more impactful than what he did. Because if I get return KO here, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, let's go ahead and play this. Why not? You know, let's get back a hoe from his discard pile. And then now I'll definitely play the Shaman. Maybe if I had played Shaman, he would have gone for the GX attack, in fact. Um, I can't play Nona again. So I'm just going to have to do this. It's unfortunate that I have three triples and no Snorlax VMAX. Uh, now I have this Snorlax VMAX, but no triple. But that's okay, because I got double Ultra Wall, so we should be pretty fine here. So let's do this. And let's evolve, right? That's step number one. So I really want to conserve this Ultra Wall for as long as I can. I don't think I'll need Great Capture, honestly. Well, yeah, I have Dazzle Machine on VNC Curse, it's fine. Alright, so this will get me some Chino. Will it... Actually, no, this will get me Shaman. Yeah, this will get me Shaman. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Just get rid of their Cold Stone. I don't foresee any other tool cards being, like, particularly annoying. Then I'm gonna go ahead and propagate here. Yeah, I probably should have grabbed the Chino. It's fine. I'll grab it now. There's a Sinchino. And now we're gonna use Setup for 5. And then we have that. And no triple yet. So honestly, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this hand away. I don't see any reason why I wouldn't do this. Just look at the next 6. Look at the next 8 with the Sinchino. There's a the triple I needed. Perfect. And then I'll go ahead and... So with a full bench, how much do I do? Three... I do exactly 300 damage, which is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So let's do this. And then do I want this little widow? Do I care? No, I... Like, I, I prefer not to have that. And then we'll do this. And actually, I should propagate, make do. Right, I was forgetting to do that. And we have a turn to 300 damage attack, right? Turn to 300, Chi Max Fall. Trading two prizes for three, always, always a good trade. And like I said, my opponent could simply rebirth and go into Glacian and hit me for 70, right? Which is not really a big deal because we'll be able to simply Guzma around that guy. Uh, we don't have a great hand right now, but we still have all four BS Seekers in the deck. We still have. Um, make do to look like we're essentially looking at the next three cards um, to try to find a Via Seeker. So we should be good. We really should be good. If my opponent had knocked out my. If my opponent had knocked out my three bench Pokemon, that might have been a lot more difficult for us to pull off the 300 damage with a full bench, right? But that's on them. Right? That is on them for choosing the wrong attack, essentially. Alright. Alright. Uh, laser, not the biggest of deals. We're gonna see an Ultra Ball. Set up. You see the thing again, so I'm surprised. Like, why would you pinch that? I guess to draw your cards with Shaman, but now my opponent simply opened up the win condition of the Kuzma, right? So, 
pretty good for us. Can I find a Guzma? That is the question. Even if my stadium gets bumped, which apparently it won't be, I lose three Pokemon, right? So I would lose one, two, and three, and then I have one more, I have the Execute, I have the Stadium, and I have a Quick Ball. I do also have Rescue Stretcher in the deck, so we should go. We really should be good here. Alright. So, uh, let's start with the Propagation, plus Execute. I mean, worst case scenario, we actually have a knockout, right? Uh, you know what? Ooh. If I field lower Sky Field, my own, like, unless my opponent catches on to this, unless my opponent catches on to that, and doesn't remove this guy from play. He probably would. He would assume he would. Ah, uh, there we go. There's a VS Seeker. For the Goose Mom. And we'll go ahead and Goose Mom. And we'll go ahead and evolve. And take the KO. There we go. Yeah, my opponent doesn't even wait. <laughs> doesn't even wait to see if we had the um energy right there so you can see that this deck is really powerful really quick and against anything that gives out two or three prizes not only is Nurlax VMAX really difficult to take down but it's just so quick they take KO so so quickly that it's just pretty pretty powerful now I will say that the Altaria feels like way too much in this deck I would easily cut that you know make this change and possibly consider adding a third Snorlax VMAX for prizing purposes. And, um, I don't know, I'd love a 3 3 Sinchino overall. Like, technically, you already have a 3 3, a 3 2. So perhaps I would do that. Right? Maybe I would do that, actually. Because having double Sinchino seems pretty good. Or. You could also just add a second Wynonna, because turn one Wynonna is really good. And maybe even a second Guzma, or just a third Snorlax GMX, something like that. I feel like Altaria is definitely not necessary. Because what fighting threat is there? There is no fighting threat right now. In Expanded, there was no fighting threat in Collinsville. Um, like, maybe Lucard, right? But I guess with all the Tubal Dark hate, Fighting had a possibility, or Turbo Dark Hype fighting had a possibility, plus Snorlax VMAX Hype. But with Tremnar being the deck to beat in the expanded format, I feel like you would just benefit more from not having that and having more consistency overall. So yeah, there you have it. Big props to Andrew Mahone from the Trigger Game for the deck. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, and I'll see you tomorrow for more expanded. Bye bye.